Okay. And now I'm not sure if my camera uh, mic was muted while I just did that introduction. And if it was, oops. And that being said, I'm Stephen Boffman. Time to make the calligraphy, and we're doing some live and grocery script practice. And if you're watching the replay, welcome. And if you're watching the live stream, if you enter the chat, uh, request a word. I'll write it for you. I love doing that. I love taking viewer requests. So in the meantime, <clears throat> excuse my coughs. Let's uh, let's make some calligraphy. So this weekend was a lot of fun. Uh, it's Valentine's weekend, and uh, my wedding anniversary is on the on Valentine's Day. And uh, my wife and I've been married for 16 years tomorrow. That's super exciting. We had a really fun weekend with our church family celebrating a sweetheart banquet. We had some tasty tacos. Did a not so newlywed game. And, <clears throat> excuse me, we only got two of the nine questions correct. But, I don't know, some, there, were, there were some kind of hard questions. But it was, it was a fun time. It was a really fun time. Tiny bit of warm up before I got the stream going. Haven't written a whole lot this weekend. <clears throat> but I love picking up the pen. Oh, I love it. work on the congruency of my of my A-Sender loops. This one kind of got away from me a little bit. This one has a nice oval or a nice almond shape here. Oh. Made a fresh fresh batch of walnut ink before we left 
uh, for Vancouver down here. And I want to apologize for clearing my throat so much. I got a little bit of a frog in my throat. I'm not, I'm not sick. I don't have a fever or anything like that. It's just, ah, just, it's like that sometimes. So if you hear me clear my throat a lot, I don't mean to. I'm trying to mute the camera or mute the mic whenever, whenever I have to. I just apologize for that. That can probably not be fun for the listeners. Like, oh, what are you doing that for? I'm also in the process of uh, getting GarageBand figured out. If you don't know what GarageBand is, it's the free music creation app on iPhones and iPads, and uh, it's free on uh, Macs, Apple, uh, Apple machines. And I want to make some sort of like background music to play while you know while I'm doing this if I run out of something to run out of something to talk about while I'm trying to concentrate on not messing up my script y'all can listen to some some nice background music to kind of just relax so nothing like nothing like a crazy beat or like you know make me like, ah startle me or anything like that just some I guess you call it chill. Uh, some chill music to listen to. And I'm working on getting that figured out. If you are watching this and you make calligraphy, do you like to listen to music when you practice? Or do you feel like it gets in the way when you're trying to concentrate? You ever hear a lyric and then like get off track of what you're writing and start writing the lyrics? I don't think that's ever happened to me. A lot of the music I listen to when I practice it doesn't have any words. I think that would probably annoy me. Like I don't feel like listening to listening to stuff with lyrics in it. Cause then like you have to listen to the lyrics and you're concentrating on that. That's not any fun. And trying to make something like a grocery script here takes a lot of takes a lot of concentration. Because we're shooting for precision and uh, symmetry and all these different shades I'm laying down I want to try to make like this right here this little round shade here this little round shade here I want to try to match them up and like even my ovals you know, I try to want to get them as close to the same as possible and I want to make sure my hefts match when I'm pulling shades so the more I can concentrate on that the better. And I think, you know, at least, oh, you see? Already messed up. GRD. That's not high school graduation. Wah, wah. It's not the D's fault. Here you go. Finish them out. There you go. <clears throat> what is going on here? See? That's what happens when you're not concentrating and talking. I'm going to say, uh, at least right now, trying to talk while I'm trying to make calligraphy is super distracting to me and it can be very difficult to get done but I'm gonna practice through it you know that's look I, I didn't spell graduate correctly but that's a decent G pretty good R and that D's not too shabby so as far as like just practicing letter forms go that's not too bad as far as talking while I'm writing so I feel pretty good about that you know just kinda kinda find the oh, Kind of find the silver lining in that thing, you know? And then hope that the brightness doesn't kick in too hard while I'm trying to write on here and blind y'all while you're trying to look at this calligraphy. Let's spell a, let's spell a small word. Let's try. Let's see if I can fit Bond in here. Little Bond, not Big Bond. Not James Bond. 
I'll try to go to the beginning. I don't know if any of you ever tried to mix your own walnut ink from walnut ink crystals. It's not hard. It's like a half a cup of hot water and a teaspoon of the ink crystals according to the recipe that of the brand that I use. And you just mix it until it's mixed. And then I take a couple drops of uh, gum arabic and mix that in there for good measure. Excel that B is probably a little high. Immediately forgot what I was writing. Ooh. But we can come back from that. So this is just practice paper. It's good practice paper, but it's just practice paper. So I'm not going to try to go back in and retouch. So let's say, you know, because I messed up graduation here. If this was a finished piece on really good paper, I would come back and just cut this out with a knife. And it would look like it wasn't there. Because that, you know, that's actually not that big of a deal as far as uh, mistakes go on a, on a finished piece on, on good paper. Let's finish up this D here. Air trace up. That's a handy tip if you don't do it. To find out where you want to land, where you want that shade to connect with your oval component, and just lightly trace up in the air. Then seven, square off, and. All right. And something went ding. What went ding? Is this on the phone? Me, is it? I don't know. <clears throat> Excuse me. There we go. Bond. Let's see here. Let's see. How about? Exploration. And I'll do it. I'll do a magic skill E this time. Here we go. Let's do this. Oh, pick up a fiber. Sweet. This fiber's coming out of the woodwork. So to foil my calligraphy. Not on my watch, fibers. There we go. And I'm going to go with this variant of X. It's like, what are you doing? You're not making an R, are you? Nope. This here's going to be an X. It has a name, but I don't remember what it's called right now. But it reminds me of an, uh, an old English uh, X, or black letter, where you just come down, and then you come out like this. I'll tell you what, I'm going to find another source of that beeping. Where are the notifications coming from? Where? Shh. <laughs> I have no idea where the beep's coming from. Good night. I'll get a pee in here. A big challenge for me when I was learning in Grocer Script was trying to keep the heft of my peas on slant and at the same heft as the rest of my uh, minuscule shades. And you can see here I'm ever so slightly off slant. Kind of went back a little bit too far. Slants, or the uh, heft is good, but it's just something we got to 
continually work on. Oh no you don't. Splice. Small shade. Don't collapse the hairline. Ooh. Explore. Here's an arm. Oh, we got fiber. Good night. Go a little bit further. Exploration. Ooh, that was good. I'm starting to think that this P was a little too thick. Hmm. Maybe we'll have another P word next. Because, see, this one is actually closer to the heft on here. Exploration. And that's the challenge. Have a light hand. And have control over your shades. I've seen some some really good practice from folks in a, a group I'm in on Facebook. Everyone's in, in different parts of their journey. And they'll, you know, they've been working with a, like a Nico G or a G style nib. And it's a very stiff nib. It doesn't have a lot of give. It doesn't have a lot of flex <clears throat> to it. And... You know, it, it takes a lot of pressure to get anything out of that pen. Like, you're really, really pressing down to get uh, thick shades out of it. And then they'll transfer over to, like, a Hunt 101 or Leonard Principle EF, which is my weapon of choice. And, whoa, come on, focus. There you go. And they'll switch over to that. They'll switch over to one of these flexier nibs, and they're gonna they're they're using the same amount of pressure to you know make the shades that they were using. And oh boy, they're just some super thick shades. And it it, it takes practice to get used to that amount of flex. You know, when I when I first started out, I was using a, a Nico G or a was it talking talk, no, it wasn't. It was a Nico G, I think. But I was using a G, a G nib for the longest time until I figure out that uh, these are really good. These pens here, uh, Leonard Principal EF yeah, or Hunt 101. Excuse me. Uh, for fine writing like this. How about...
needs to get a little bit thicker up top and I can get a little That's not the best slant on that. I haven't made a, haven't made a minuscule P in a while. Does it show? <laughs> there we go. Our heater kicking on. Here we go, redemption time. We're gonna do it. We keep that P on slant. Had a good heft. Mm -hmm. I'll let you judge. I think that's pretty good. A little wobbly there in the middle. There we go, not too bad. A little long in that, that small shade up top. If you're watching this in the replay, let me know in the comments. Do you do anything for Valentine's Day? Double turn entry, go! Ooh, I could do that a little bit better. back up <laughs> what is this? <laughs> I want to try an H again. I don't feel like that was my best effort. Also, I've done an, I've done a lot of majuscule in a while. I need to practice more. There we go. Really, fiber. I kicked you out last time. There we go, double turn entry. All right, here we go, let's do this. I 
extend the loop, nail the loop, crossbar, little small shade. See, that's better. I feel a lot better about that loop. We're not going to spell hunting, we're going to spell something else. Pens dry. Here we go. Make sure we get out from underneath the uh, the L loop there. Health. There we go. Let's uh, let's cross that too when we get there. And we're there, so let's cross it. There we go. And before I learned in Grocer's Script, I had no idea how to uh, cross a T with a straight edge. And even as I was learning it, like going through the lessons, excuse me. Like going through the lessons at the uh, uh, doing David Grimes Dreaming and Script course, you know he taught us how to use a straight edge to cross our T's. I chickened out like 85, 90 percent of the time, and just try to just try to hand cross the T's. And it wasn't until either right at graduation or like after. <laughs> graduation that I actually developed the confidence to cross my T's with a straight edge every time except for a couple of streams ago I tried to do with a paintbrush and <laughs> mess it up real bad <laughs> but I use my calligraphy ruler here what is that get off of there uh, my little calligraphy guideline ruler and it's really nice because it has like this uh, camera camera Okay, there it is. So it has this angled piece here for making guidelines, and I use that to rest my thumb against so I can hold it up above. So my thumb is resting on the paper, and uh, the point is kind of like digging into my thumb. It's not, it doesn't hurt, just kind of holding it there. Then it has, it's like a nice angle that I can, I can create straight lines and not worry about uh, worry about the ruler falling into the calligraphy or anything like that so it's, it's nice and secure so it's a super convenient tool just you know, outside of making uh, guidelines which is really really nice it I like when you can find multiple uses for the same tool like I'll use that calligraphy ruler to make uh, guidelines for uh, like old English as well because you know, you just add stuff up, like, if I need to make something at 14 millimeters, phew, phew, there it is. You know, I can just, yeah, it's all it's all right there. It's great stuff. So, yeah, let's, let's write some more words. There's health for us. Whew. How about... I mean, more and more people are used to seeing.
keep the others consistent. I almost made the other style R out of habit. It's my favorite to make. I used to make this style R all the time. Back when I just did a sort of copper plate calligraphy before I learned a grocery script. And you know, this is like a really fast R to whip out. It's up, cross, down, out, and you're just and you're done. And it, you know, copper plate that sort of round hand style doesn't have a lot of pen lifts so you can just whip through words with R's at breakneck speed essentially that's not too bad a little S practice in there too Is my nose. Hmm, I don't like that. Excuse me while I adjust this camera a little bit. There we go. Just in case, reload that pen. Here we go. That's not what you want right there. You're, when you're making an oval component in a grocery script, you want to get in and out of that small shade in a hurry. That's not a, that was not a good example. <clears throat> so if you take a look at this guy, I mean, it, it, it kind of tapers, and I don't think there was a, I don't think I picked up a fiber. That was just sloppy. Ooh, come on, focus, what are you doing? Let me say we try minuscule again. That's been something I've been working on a lot lately, is... My minuscule, or not my minuscule, my minuscule, my minuscule O's. And just oval components in general. Whether it's a G, Q, D. That's better. Make this small shade, kept it in between the sort of 50% line and the X height. 
you want to let that that small sheet in there live in there and you might you might be asking yeah Stephen you do that for O's you know which which is part of the style but why do you do it for A's and Q's and and all those letters where there's a stem connecting with it why do you do that uh, it's sort of it's sort of in grocery script tradition but also it's sort of a landmark to help you land that stem where you want it so it's, it's not just a super skinny little line that's somewhere we're going to connect so we're going to connect right there we're gonna do a little trace see that connect right up to it and something the penman of yore as we affectionately call them the old penman from the uh, late 1800s and early 1900s let's see if I can I can show you they get these uh, you get these little magnifying glasses and you can put that over here and if you look closely let me move this over here like this if you look closely you can see that tiny bit of small shade right there and that for folks who you know like me who are, who are trying to really really hone their craft and really dig into a grocery script that's a desirable quality and that's something that's seen a lot in the calligraphy of you know these old or these uh, penmen of yore who would just who had really wonderful skill and uh, you know they seem like tireless in their pursuit of of craftsmanship and uh, professional looking work and so it's you know it's tradition it's a landmark to help us land uh, the stem before we exit and it's also a nod to the the penmen of the past you know who developed this script for us to continue the tradition of and it's 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 a neat heritage I mean, grocer script is an American script, and I'm an American. You know, as much as you know that I live here, and you know, a grocer script isn't isn't relegated to America, but it's just you know that's hey that's that's our style. You know, all you know cultures all over the world have you know beautiful, unique styles of calligraphy and and food and everything like that, and you know you hear like as American as apple pie and stuff like that and it's neat to know that there's you know another beautiful thing that came out of America that you know any anyone can enjoy anyone can get their hands on a if you can get a hands on a pen and some guidelines and some ink and just go to town and, and create this beautiful uh, this beautiful modular and fine fine script so apple pie huh Man, I might have to get some food pretty soon I'm starting to get hungry Let's see if we can pull this eight out Oh, a little more ink, please. There we go. Fill this ball terminal. <laughs> Clear out the fiber. And let's make this floating crossbar. Maybe. Yeah, not too shabby. There we go. Now we're going to make two peas next to each other. We need to keep them thin, on slant, and hopefully congruent. <laughs> one down, one to go. Probably seven that a little too hard. Yeah, 
catchphrase. And I'm not in a rush. There we go. Something I've come to really enjoy about in Grocer Script is that you take your time doing it. You know, rush. I can probably count on one hand the amount of times I've needed to be hasty in making some engrosser script. I remember one of them was a well it was an exercise in class where we needed to make a row of ascenders and descenders one after the other ascender descender ascender descender as quickly as possible to get a feel for uh, the congruency of those shapes of the of the loops because we're trying to keep them trying to keep them the same <clears throat> and I think the other was maybe about a month ago when I was asked to write a sample envelope at about 50% fidelity, which is you just write in just quick in a grocery script uh, for uh, like a wedding address. Like that's it. It's like, here, write this address real quick. See how fast you can do it. <clears throat> I think I did it like in 10 minutes. But I hadn't written in a while. There we go. Ooh, that came out better. Still gotta retouch this a little bit though. Better slant. Oh, come on, sloppy. Apple pie. There you go, that's a little bit better. Right, all right. <clears throat> well, that will do it for today. Sorry about the, the mic and trying to get the camera figured out here while I'm in this hotel. Uh, thanks for, for watching. And until then, keep getting after it, make that calligraphy, and uh, stay tuned for, for more calligraphy content. Y'all have a good night, take care, bye-bye.